Um, so, um, Corey, take us back to your roots of water skiing. Um, where did you uh, ski and what age did you uh, start skiing? Well, I began on Lake Gaston, which is um, mostly in North Carolina, although part of it is in Virginia, so about two hours south of here. Um, my granddad started the water skiing for our family uh, when he was in the Air Force right out of college. He got stationed in Florida, and then when he moved back to the Washington, D.C. area, started looking for places to uh, continue this, this new passion that he had found and ended up finding Lake Gaston. My aunts and uncles and my mom all got into it and they did it as a family thing. And then I was the first grandchild to come along. So at age three, I was just kind of like, hey, you know, when is it my turn? You guys are all having this fun. So granddad and them got me back there on some of those tied together trainers. All right. Yeah, and I did a beach start back then. I just stand on the beach with the handle to the skis and Oh, yeah. They take me off. They've got some pictures with me wearing a, a spray leg, three years old. It was the, it was the awesome. 80s, so I had the nice neon vest going on. And uh, we did it like that for years as a family. We never knew it was going to turn into anything like this. But That's awesome. That's awesome. I remember when I was six and um, I had the trainers with the rope, and uh, my mom and a friend held me over the water, <laughs> and uh, my dad was in the boat and took off and they just let me go and I just took off. Yeah, you hardly even need to be in gear. It's like starting kneeboarding when you can just kneel on it and just yeah, start that's going. Yeah, right. that's right. So, um, on your website, I read a little bit on your bio about your first tournament. Uh, take us back and um, what that felt like in that yeah. day. Yeah, so that was 1994. So by then I was eight years old, and we had just been skiing on Lake Gaston behind our, our nice uh, 1981 Mastercraft, which we still have. And um, we had gotten an Insta Slalom course, and we would set it up during the week, trying to, you know, battle the jet skiers and everybody else slashing the thing up. Um, but Granddad and myself and my mom and my uncle Kevin, uh, we'd all kind of be trying to figure out how to get through that that course you know we didn't know what we were doing just taking a whack at it every time my, my uncle Kevin he kind of started getting plugged in and getting some awareness of the ski scene and he found out that there was going to be a novice tournament at Fawn Lake in Spotsylvania and said hey you know why, why don't we try it so we thought uh, all right and we all showed up at this tournament at Fawn Lake and um, as it happened uh, I believe all four of us, my granddad, my uncle, my mom, and I, we won our respective age divisions, and wow. we felt pretty good about ourselves. We are like, oh, okay, you know, this was fun. We got a trophy, had something to take home, and the, the, of course the people there were, like all ski people, super friendly, really nice, and they were like, hey, you guys aren't bad at this. You ought to come to the Virginia State uh, Tournament. So, I thought, okay, and... You know, that, we kind of made the foray into the tournament water ski world, and still again, we had no idea where that was going to go, but, you know, I ended up getting hooked on it. And, right, it's a lot of fun, right? Well, the just, again, meeting the people, skiing at the different lakes that are kind of hidden away like this, you know, we, we always <laughs> found ourselves being like, where do the people even find these lakes? But, you know, we... Every week, we we seem to find a, a fun group of people out there doing something that they love, having a good time, and uh, kind of just fell in love with that that scene. So, Corey, tell us about your school. If someone wants to get more information about the school here, where should they go? Well, probably the best thing to do would be just to go to my website. It has most of the information that you'd need to find out if it's a good place for you to go. That would be peaceloveandwaterskiing.com spell it out just like it sounds just like it says here peace love and water skiing um, and you can see some pictures you can get the address my emails there I believe my phone number is even there um, you know you get in touch with me we can go back and forth and uh, yeah I love to get people out you know you gotta enjoy these great days that's that's good that's good um, um, so tell us how you first got started coaching and also share with us how you maintain your level of enthusiasm. I know that when you're coaching me, um, I can tell that 
you are very enthusiastic. Of, you want to see me progress. You want to see me grow, and you get excited when um, things start clicking. So, um, when did you get started, and, and what is it you love about it? Well, I think that kind of goes back to having a couple of mentors that did that for me, that you know, we're able to engage in that shared experience. I mean, coaching is a shared experience where, you know, you're involved in the other person's learning and progress. And I remember the feelings when, like I said, Glenn Jackson or my granddad or my mom or Chet Raley would feed off of the excitement that I was getting on the other end of the rope. And then uh, as I grew older and kind of grew out of the, the junior development and got the chance to then go back as a volunteer and coach, and those things, it was really just a treat to, to be on the opposite end of the rope, be in the boat, looking back, but still taking part in that shared experience. And, um, you know, at, at some stage, it's hard to get a lot of PBs in your own skiing. So if you're able to take part in sharing in other people's or just, you know, feeling, being part of their progress, it's an opportunity to, uh, to get some of those feelings of excitement that otherwise, you know, are kind of few and far between. And what I particularly like are um, are skiers who, you know, they, they bring their own exuberance and enthusiasm to the table. It is, you know, doing a lot of coaching. It can be hard to be enthusiastic if the skier isn't really enthusiastic themselves, if they are only quasi-committed to their performance, or if they only seem like they're extending a partial trust to me as a coach, like they are apprehensive that if my advice is going to work. But if somebody comes and they're willing to kind of present themselves as a blank slate and say, hey, let's go into this thing and figure out together how to get better, and I want I want your input. I want you as the coach to work with me and let's retool and figure out how to go. Well, that kind of opens things up to, to have a learning adventure together. And, and at that time, uh, you know, the, it is, it's fun. Yeah, skiing, it, it's fun. And you mentioned um, coaching in Acapulco at Ski Paradise. Um, that sounds like a lot of fun. Tell us about the day that you got the first call asking you to come to Ski Paradise. Yeah, actually it was, it was an email from Gordon Rathbun. I was just, I think I had a busy day down here at the lake, making it up to the house kind of, you know, at dark, dinner, you know, at 9 o'clock, putting the dishes away. It's almost 10, kind of like staggering to the emails to try to get things sorted out for the next day and uh, opened it up, saw one from Gordon Rathbun, opened that one and yeah all of a sudden kind of my crashing energy spiked back up when it was saying that uh, they had an opening for a spot as their, their full-time coach and needed a, a staff coach and that I was his current first choice. Yeah, wow. I think I almost levitated out of my chair for a minute there. Um, I wanted to just start banging on the keyboard like, yes, 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 I, I'll be there, just whoosh, whatever. Wow. So I had to had to collect myself, take a few breaths, and um, you know, the, after that initial exu you know elation moment, you know, you kind of slam back to reality, and you think, you know, okay, this is a, a six and a half month commitment, and I'm going to be in a foreign country away from my family. You start getting all those thoughts, but. Um, even with all that, I mean, something something of that magnitude uh, for someone like me going to coach at an amazing place like Ski Paradise, that's the opportunity of a lifetime. So, Corey, tell us about um, a day of your training and, and practice uh, on the water and uh, in the gym. Uh, you do things like yoga or... Yeah, I, uh, this year I've actually been, I think, training a lot smarter. Last year, with trying to run ski school and, and practice, I was not focusing enough. I'd just hop out of the boat, throw on all my gear, jump back there, and try to ski. But after coaching and telling a lot of other people stuff, I've got all these thoughts about skiing going through my head that aren't even necessarily related to my skiing. Um, you know, they might be relevant, but it's a jumble. So one thing that I've been doing a lot better of this year is taking some time before I go out, um, to kind of get in my own mindset, and actually, you mentioned yoga. It's a big—that's a big part of it for me. Um, always before tournament rounds, 
I have a, uh, a routine, like a yoga routine that I go through to get my body, you know, just limbered up and, and get some blood flowing, get fully ready. But I think even more than that, it kind of gets my mind clear and brings me into a sharper focus. And so this year I've really been taking the time to, to also do that in practice, to kind of go through my routine before I go out there, um, bring myself into a good focus mode, you know, kind of get my thoughts related to what I want to do today, this set, and, um, and then I find when I do that, and I enter the water with better focus and, and better strength, you know, my body feeling better, uh, what I've been doing is generally shorter sets uh, with higher focus. So this is your ski here, uh, you're skiing on a D3, um, tell us uh, about your ski and, and why you're skiing on a D3. Well, um, you know, I was when I was in Acapulco in 2010, when I first got down there, uh, I had the opportunity to try a whole bunch of skis, and uh, the D3 X7 was just what I found that I liked the best. It was very predictable, very stable, uh, handled really nicely on both sides, and I just felt very at home on it right away. And so I stuck with that and rode the, D the X7 all through last season, and had planned to take that into uh, this year as well on, on the new X7. Um, but as it turned out, uh, they started, you know, as they do, you know, working on some new ideas and sending me, they started sending me some test skis to just try out and give feedback, which I found really cool. I, I was like part of the, wow. the R&D process. Yeah, I'm very glad to have that relationship going on with D3. And then in that process, the number of the skis that they had me trying, um, which were basically an X7, a Fusion, and then a modified uh, Fusion, um, I found hell amazingly different. The X7 and the Fusion are, it's almost hard to believe that they come out of the same manufacturer. Um, but in getting to take the steps back and really understand what the skis are trying to do and what I'm having always a better understanding of what I'm trying to do in the, in the course, uh, I ended up settling on the Fusion for, for this year. It's a bit faster and it's a bit more of an autopilot ski. The X7 is very manual. If you tell it what to do, it will respond and it will do that. And that's what originally attracted me to that ski. It won't do anything you don't tell it to do. The Fusion has a little bit of a mind of its own. It will. It wants to do some things. They're really great things, but if you're not ready for them, they can catch you off guard. But the more time I spent with the ski, the more I understood what it wanted to do, and I was able to synchronize myself to that, I found it was something I could really uh, click with. And I've been, I feel like uh, right now I'm, I'm very confident with it. And, you know, once again, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to skiing my first tournament with the Fusion and, you know, see what I can do with this thing. So, Corey, you're sponsored by D3. And what other companies or organizations are you sponsored by or do you partnership with? Well, D3 has been uh, great. Also now, um, I've been working with Centurion Boats. We began that relationship last year at the Nationals, and I got on the, um, the promo program with them. And now I've just been trying to get the word out. These are fantastic boats, especially if, if you're a slalom nut like, like we are. Um, you know, the wake's amazing, the driving is incredible, and uh, I think my favorite feature may still be the uh, non-carpet, the nice sea deck on the floor, um, but just a lot of smart stuff for the, uh, you know, for the water skier, you know, being put into this boat, and I think they're pretty sharp looking too. So Centurion Boats, uh, U.S. Gear Handles, um, they've been helping me with uh, my mist grab issues. I come on the handle like a lot cleaner, and they got a nice rubber grip. And they're ropes, too, really. Well, Corey, thank you for your time today um, on behalf of uh, 15off.com and all the 15off skiers out there. Um, it's a great place. I hope that some skiers can come and check it out. And we're just going to go hit the water now. Yeah, hey, I appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, let's drop this thing down and uh, see what we can do out there. Yeah, sounds good.